What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Best Family Homestead. I'm Aaron. I'm here. We got Papa Hugh and Robert, and uh, we are. Hello, everybody. We're going to be going down to a little car show local. We'll be taking the ambulance and the 57. Uh, before we take the ambulance, we got to clean it up and change the oil and uh, get it all. Make sure it's roadworthy to head down the road. So. No better time to, yeah, the wambulance. No better time to do it. And we got Papa here, Papa That's Hugh right. here with us. Yeah, we already came over here and greased up the water pump, which I did not know about. See, these old military things, this is actually a grease cap. And the grease in it was as hard as a rock. So we pumped a new grease in it and I unstopped it back in there with what I could. And you screw this on. And when you first put it on, you just barely tighten it. I had a hard time getting this started the last time too because I don't want to risk cross threading it because it's brass. But you just run started on there and then ever, however many miles, of course this thing don't get drove much. You just tighten this up and that pushes grease into the bearing on the water pump. And when you tighten it all the way up, then you screw it off and pack it full of grease and start back again. But a lot of old equipment and old machinery has these, that old planer I've got is covered up with these. But this thing is amazing. It still has a waterproof ignition. It's still 24 volt. It still has a governored carburetor on it. And the carburetor is amazing. This thing runs so smooth, but still 24 volts. And then we got the, uh, and I think this may be the voltage regulator for it, but I'm not sure. Papa Q knows way more about my ambulance than I do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 62 years old and, and a, a bunch of my friends and myself, we hot rodded a lot of these things in the 70s because they were cheap. They were four wheel drive and it was amazing what you could do with them. But this thing is amazing because the siren still works, the lights still work. It's yeah. an absolutely great vehicle. Absolutely great. Let's uh, I'm gonna crawl under and try to change the oil. Yeah, it's kind of wet, so we're gonna let Robert get under there and he's smaller than we are. <laughs> yeah, I know. I need uh, I need something to step on when I'm around you guys. You need to bring something look taller. Mats I've got a home down here. Does it have grease fittings in the he does? We need to grease the shackles, it's got grease fittings in the shackles, probably two grease fittings back there in the shackles. Yep, we need to grease it. This thing has oh, that was easy. Ball, oh, came right off, huh? Came yeah, right off. Out. Yes, sir. We pass me the uh, drain I pan. Absolutely will. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Usually, if you tap a drain plug like that, it makes them a lot easier to screw out. Yeah, it did. I so I bought this, I guess about a year ago, and I've never changed the oil in it. The oil was looked good when i bought it but it sat for a long time so before it really gets driven a lot i don't drive it a lot definitely had to put more oil in it but i was a little bit nervous about this particular plug coming out because it's not a normal drain plug what i'm using to take this drain plug out is a three eighths to half inch adapter which has really sharp edges on it and will fit in this splined drain plug so we can pull it out and try not to make a mess. But as easy as it came out, that's a that's a huge relief. All right, here, there we go. Look at that. Not a drop of oil on me. If you're done filming Robert. Hang on a second. You say that now, we're not over with yet. Yeah. And this, this hasn't had any oil added to it since I got it. And it, again, the oil was changed years ago. Oh, I got a drop on me now. Um, <laughs> oil was changed years ago and it has not leaked. Uh, it's leaked a half a quart since yeah, i This had thing it. is basically new, so it's only got 3,300 miles on it. Exactly.
Please pop the oil filled cap up top. Well, this one probably isn't tight enough to even matter. But Sir? Pop the oil filled cap up top. Oh, yeah. But this one's not tight enough to yeah. make a difference. The only thing I didn't get was an oil filter because they're unavailable locally. All right. But I think the oil filter is probably fine just because yeah, yeah. it was changed so recently and just doesn't get driven that much. All right, we'll let that finish and yep. we'll start getting ready to fill it up. Are you ready? Yeah. For all of the younger guys, this could be interesting. This is an oil bath air cleaner. All the older vehicles, all, even the 57 Chevrolet knew had an oil bath air filter on it. They went to a, uh, they went to paper elements, maybe 58, 59, 60, I don't remember. But see, this thing has packed full of steel wool. And it sucks the air down and into the oil and back up through this steel wool on this filter and then down through the middle end of the engine. These things were a lot more, if the oil was good in them and they were clean, they were a lot more efficient than a paper element. But just probably not the... This is a coolant leak taking place right here and we have aluminum rock going on. All the white powder around it is aluminum rock. So all he'll have to do is pull this off and probably have to take a hammer him out of gasket for no for you people that don't know what i'm talking about hammering the gasket do you know i do not okay you take this off turn it upside down you just buy a piece of gasket paper and you take the tiniest ball paint hammer you can find and hold that gasket still and just tap around it and it'll cut it even the holes it'll cut it out if we were set up to do it i would demonstrate you for it because it's extremely easy and these are the original clamps right here, so you want to be really careful with them yeah. because you need to put those back on. But that's just a piece of one inch stick hose. This is just stick hose too. Is a bottom hose stick hose? Nope. Yeah, it is stick hose. We got a metal pipe and two pieces of stick hose. And it looks like that bottom one needs to be cleaned too. A little bit down there, but it's just rust. It's not aluminum rock. But the aluminum rot will continue getting worse and most of the time what caused this is setting a long time and bad antifreeze. Gotcha. The antifreeze will wire out. Yeah. And it causes a, a reaction between it. But it just cleaned it up real good and I'd spray a little paint or something mm -hmm. on it. Maybe put a little uh, non-petroleum lubricant on it non-petroleum base and put the hose back on it and it'll be fine. All right, we're gonna talk just a little bit about oil mess. Robbie's putting 1540 in this thing, which is fine. It's only has 3000 miles on it. So there's not any crud buildup in the engine, I'm sure with only 3,300 original miles. The thing has been amazingly took care of. It was in a museum for quite a while. So early on in the 40s and 50s, you had a couple of main oil refineries and like the Pennsylvania crude was a paraffin based oil, which was a good oil in certain applications. And then I cannot remember right off my head what they called the other crude oil, like was in Texas and stuff. But if you, uh, if you drove a vehicle, I know a lot of older mechanics have heard of Quaker crud and that's cause Quaker State would gum the engine up really bad. But the problem with Quaker State oil is then people didn't drive far enough to get the engine up to operate in temperature for any period of time. So if you were a, a road salesman or something, you wanted to run Quaker State oil because it was paraffin based oil and you were getting your own engine hot enough long enough period of time to keep the wax suspended in the oil. If you didn't, the paraffin would separate out of the oil and it would go i've tore down old engines before that had quaker state run in them and whether you could see where the rocker arms i mean they, they were completely full of wax but it wasn't the oil's problem it was a driver problem and then you had the texas crude that was a non-paraffin base and if you were running short distances and never getting a car hot then you needed to run like the Texas crew that didn't have paraffin in it. They were both great oils. It was nothing but a misunderstanding. And now there are so many specific specifications on oil, so many government 
ASC standards that it, and I'm going to be perfectly honest with you, in my in the last 25 years, I have never put the same brand of oil in my car on a on a change. I might run, I'll run a Walmart brand one time, then the next time I'll run Advanced brand, just wherever I'm at to pick oil up. But I don't run name brand oil because the specifications are so much under the guidelines. It doesn't matter. You could swap from one oil to the next, and you'll never have any effect. And I have put, uh, and I worked for Ashland Oil for 30 years the APAC division of Iceland Oil. And we got explained to this every winter when we had to take an oil class for the equipment. But uh, that's pretty much it in a nutshell. The, the myth about putting the same oil in your car every time, it did used to matter. It did. But in the modern era, it does not matter because the oil is so refined and it's so filtered it don't matter. They take the paraffin out of the, most of the oil now. The paraffin is stripped, so you don't have that problem. And with the synthetic oils, I love the synthetic oils. They are a lot better than the natural petroleum, so I usually run a synthetic blend. And there again, it's whatever I can buy on sale, whether it's at Napa, CarQuest, Walmart, or any other place. I don't particularly like a recycled oil, but it's probably it goes by the same specifications. It's got to be pretty good, but... But uh, that's just all in a nutshell. And all of the myths that, yeah, the myths in the 40s and 50s, early 60s, but from the 70s on, one oil is just as good as another, in my opinion. And everybody brags on uh, Castrol GTX. Castrol does not refine their own oil. They buy it from Exxon and other refiners and they put their additives in it. So stay away from a Unless you're a diehard Castrol fan, you don't need to pay that much for oil. So that's pretty much it in a nutshell. All right, so now we got the mechanical stuff finished. So now we're going to clean it up and uh, clean it all out and get it ready for the show.